This is Twit. I'm never a order during the event person. I'm always a wait and see. Um, <laughs> right. And so I want I want people who actually know to get their hands on it and all that kind of stuff. But I will say now we'll move on to the watch. I was moved enough <laughs> to pre-order during the event on this watch. So, uh, Huynh, why don't you tell us what, about what, what your takeaways about the watch were? So, so both of us got bit by this because I think both of us were not that hot on the watch. Like I, no. I, I think yeah. both of us right now are not wearable users, but I, nope. I just something about it. It's like, well, I need to try this. And so, yeah, the Google pixel watch, there's a lot that we already knew about this, but you know, now we have, you know, hard numbers and here we'll do the spec rundown just because that's what we do. So you've got a 41 uh, millimeter diameter, 12.3 uh, millimeter thick uh, dome glass watch face in a stainless steel body. It's got 32 gigabytes of on-device storage and is running Wear OS 3.5. And in terms of battery life, I know I know with it, so we'll get to the Fitbit part, but I know that it being kind of a Fitbit device, this might not make some Fitbit wearers very happy, but it, it does tout 24 hours of battery life, even with you know, a lot of like the tracking, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, something very interesting is that you do get a, there is a quick charge so that you should get about 50% battery life in 30 minutes. Um, and another interesting thing about this and kind of, we were kind of talking about this earlier is that uh, there is a $349 LTE list version, which you need to connect via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to your phone <laughs> or... There is a 399 uh, LTE, uh, sorry, 4G LTE version, which, by the way, I checked before the show is waitlist is listed. So if you did get the, if you did pre-order the 4G LTE version, and you're noticing like Ron has a change for the later in your shipping times, that might be why. And if you're looking to pre-order mm -hmm. one now, and you really, really want the LTE version, you're unfortunately joining a waitlist. But yes, there's those two options, and that's accounts for the fifty dollars price difference. It is water resistant up to five atmospheres slash fifty meters. It is scratch resistant, and you have that really cool crown control for that tactile, physical on-screen scrolling uh, shortcuts. There's actually a little subtle side button uh, right above the crown control that is going to be your most recently used apps. And of course, a wide swath of band choices. And what's really cool, and we I had rumors that there was going to be a proprietary, um, you know, band attachment system. And there is. And the made by Google stated that it was, you know, very much inspired by the way that lenses affix the camera bodies where the mechanism is rather internal. Um, I am curious for you know, how fiddly or easy to use that is. Um, I've kind of, I mean, I mean, I know everybody's embargo, but it seems like there's kind of, maybe it's something you have to get used to, but it is a really cool feature and is really slick, uh, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. So with this watch, Wear OS 3.5, you get all the typical Wear features, contactless payments, notifications, turn by turn with Google Maps. Uh, if you have the 4G version, you can actually stream music via YouTube Music uh, over 4G and not have to carry your phone. So if you're, you know, the running type and need to have your jams with you while you're running, you don't necessarily need to carry your phone in those little skinny, like, you know, running pants pockets and hopefully have it crash on the ground. Um, some other really interesting things. And, you know, we keep talking about quality of life. And with the watch, there's a couple of things that I think are really great in terms of like quality of life and safety. And again, not necessarily the sexiest things, but some really amazing functionality like uh, emergency SOS feature that allows you to alert the, the watch to alert uh, emergency responders or, or trusted con contacts. For example, when you fall uh, and you know you can't help but think maybe about your older relatives or folks with maybe mobility issues, the watch has fall detection so that if it senses a hard fall, it will do the work of automatically connecting you to emergency ser services and actually doing an auto dial. Uh, and kind of along with that and now getting into Fitbit integration, there's even like um, an ECG app uh, that kind of goes with the watch to detect atrial fibrillation and all that stuff. So, I mean, cool. Um, again, not the most sexy things, but trying to make it a integral part and, and like kind of these are the kind of features that I think would actually make me say, hey, maybe I can convince my parents to get, you know, a smartwatch that is not just kind of like, you know, um, accoutrement to their daily life, but also <laughs> kind of safety and health features. Um, so speaking of health, we're talking about Fitbit. We we pondered for many, many months about what the heck it meant that Fitbit was now owned by Google and how would Fitbit integrate into, you know, the Pixel Watch. And it really does seem that Fitbit is a priority on this watch. There is, quote, deep Fitbit integration. They've got in it, they've got a quote, you know, very accurate heart rate tracking uh, sensor in there, optimized quote, down to the processor level, which is cracking your heart rate once every second. 
There's all of the Fitbit goodies. Um, I am not a very experienced or at, very experienced at all Fitbit user, but it sounds like they're bringing all the Fitbit goodies in there with 40 exercise modes, steps, distance, built-in GPS, um, active zone, and then of course, tracking sleep score and sleep stages. You know, Fitbit says that it has like 20 billion nights tracked and is using that data kind of to help you analyze, you know, your sleep score, your sleep stages. And with that, you know, your kind of readiness, um, your daily readiness store to kind of know whether you got to go out there and crunch really hard on your workout or you get to kind of sit on the couch and drink your coffee because maybe you didn't have such a good night's sleep. So all of that Fitbit integration is in the watch. And that does contribute again to kind of all the sensor tracking, probably to the battery life, along with the fact that it's a smart watch with a display and radio and all kinds of stuff. So Deep Fitbit integration, it would be really great to see maybe in a few months what kind of um, embedded Fitbit, uh, longtime Fitbit users think of this device. But I mean, yeah, that's a lot of stuff in a not nutshell <laughs> shaped uh, <laughs> watch. Um, but yeah, uh, available for pre-order now is going to be available uh, broadly October 13th in the US, Canada, UK, Ireland, Germany, France, Japan, Australia, and Taiwan. And you can pre-order right now from Google, the Google store and Fitbit and along with other global retailers. So um, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and that's why I pre-ordered one. <laughs> so so Tashaka, we, we uh, yeah. it sounds like I don't have this yet. I don't have it okay. yet, so I'm not. I don't have to honor. You do have pictures of it on your wrist, well, though. Well, I was. I was, say, I was going to say. I was going to. I was going to say. Per your Twitter, we were looking at your yeah. Twitter earlier, and it looks like you are excited for this watch as well, huh? I'm a big quantified self nerd. Okay, I like. <laughs> um, also, I have uh, type two diabetes, so being able to track, monitor my heart, um, being able to integrate different things like. Um, I, I, I'm a cyborg now. I wear a constant glucose monitor. And, and so the, the the Freestyle Libra 2 app is what I use uh, to integrate and keep all that data in one place. Um, so I, I'm really excited about the, the Pixel Watch. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. It looks great, uh, as you saw from my Twitter feed. It, it I've never stopped wearing watches. So even when everybody moved to pulling their smartphone out, smartphone out their pockets, and checking the time frequently or however often they did. I never did that because I, I just loved watches and never stopped loving them. So for me, the smartwatch uh, was a natural uh, fit. It was something I was naturally into from the first smartwatch from day one, from when I used to wear my Pebble and, and all that. So uh, really excited for this. And the most exciting part for me, uh, uh, what Wynn brought up was the Fitbit integration. Because personally, I think Fitbit has it's it, it would be in my top three for uh, fitness platforms that are integrated with smartwatches it, it, and its social features I think are the absolute best on the market hands down bar none nobody's touching them socially uh, because like for with Apple Watch for example when you connect with somebody and want to challenge them and do contests they get your phone number. And so now you're, you're, they can text you and, and, and things like that. So whoever you're challenging and competing with, now there are third-party apps that, that make it so you don't have to do that. But just sticking with Apple itself on the first-party basis, people are going to get your phone number. But with Fitbit, you just you, it's your email address. So you can have like a junk email address or whatever that you use for casual uh, connections. You know, so if you've got uh, 300 Facebook friends and 50 of them, 40 of them have Fitbit, you can be competing. And now you're going to hear the dogs because I think my wife is coming home. But uh, so you can now, um, you know, so so Fitbit is just amazing with that. So I'm really excited to get into the watch, put on my chest strap. Uh, heart rate monitor <laughs> and test the the heart rate monitor and the Fitbit. I'm sorry, <laughs> in the Pixel Watch with Fitbit uh, against yep. my chest strap and test that accuracy and all all the features. Fascinating. Well, also um, at the event where you got to wear the watch, um, just on an aside, we saw that you got to see some of uh, friends of the show, some of our favorite people that were there with you. Uh, uh, there's Juan Bagnell and Josh Vergara. Um, awesome to see such great, great people uh, hanging out in LA at the Pixel event. That's, I'm jealous. Um, oh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, yeah sorry, so, I wanna... yeah, when you talked about the bands, uh, just so, yeah. so uh, with Apple Watch, um, there's a company that I, I love the bands. Look them up. Mm -hmm. I, I, they haven't sponsored me, done anything, but I just love their products. It's Barton, B A R T O N, watch straps. 
And what they've done is they've taken Apple's proprietary connector and, and made that basically a 22 millimeter lug adapter. So you can plug that adapter that into your Apple watch and then use any of their 22, their standard 22, I believe it's 22 millimeter watch band. So I th- I see that happening with this, where somebody's going to come along and, and make an adapter that slides on that proprietary uh, fit on the Google watch, but then allows you to use whatever other 22 millimeter or standard watch straps you want to use with the Google watch. Cool. So on my standpoint, I have not had any sort of smart watch since the LG G watch in 2014, I think it was 2014. Uh, that, that was it running Android Wear 1.5. It was the, you know, off of Marshmallow. It was the the first, you know, kind of first gen of smartwatches. And I think I wore it for a little less than a year. And then I was like, ah, I don't like watches. I don't need smartwatches. But after watching this whole presentation of this and it being the first generation of the Pixel watches, that's why I jumped and pulled the trigger and was like, all right, let me, I'm going to check it out. Um, the one question, open question I have is with the deep Fitbit integration, I don't use Fitbit. I use Google Fit, right? Like I, all my data is in Google Fit. So the question will be like, you know, can I, you know, and I don't really care about heart rate monitoring and all that sort of stuff. And so like, you know, I'm, I'm looking, you know, I did in, when you were asked earlier, I did pull the trigger on the LTE version because I want to go run and I want to not bring my phone with me. And I want to see what that experience is like because I've never done that before. So uh, that's what I'm excited about, uh, about checking out. Yeah. So. Sorry. And also just to update um scooter X in chat uh, linked a separate article where there is actually some, so there's a little bit more information for you Fitbit fans about things that you actually don't get with a pixel watch. I'm actually really confused yeah. because I yeah. think that the, if you check out nine to five Google, they do state that they do not have, um, sorry, the atrial fibril- fibrillation uh, right. feature that allows you to notify a regular heartbeat. Although it says it on the Google pixel watch blog. So that's kind of confusing. I don't know if the, blog is saying with the external ECG app, it's it's a little unclear. But there are other things that Fitbit fans will miss, including the ability to auto start, stop, and pause a workout on the device. Um, it will detect automatically after you've completed the workout. And there's other things like the smart wake alarms, SPO2 tracking, and the sleep profile feature, which you do not get on the watch. So just, just to be aware, Fitbit fans, that it's not a perfect Fitbit device, but it might be kind of like scratching your smartwatch itch while still being in the Fitbit ecosystem. So thanks, GooderX, for updating us on that. And I have some thoughts on that because for me, like not including the um, like the smart alarms, that that is such like my wife and I wake up at different times in the morning. So I wear a smartwatch to bed because I use the smart alarm to vibrate my wrist uh, so I don't wake her up because I get up earlier than she does. So every morning I get a I get a vibration on my wrist that wakes me up. Don't have to disturb her. So I'm sure they have vibration alarms, but the smart alarms I really like because what it does is with your sleep cycles. So if you get up at 6 a.m. and you set your alarm, your 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 watch alarm for 6 a.m., uh, it will and it will allow you uh, with some watches to set a, a window. So you can set like a half hour window prior to your, your your wake time and then it'll use your sleep cycle to determine when you're in light sleep and wake you up then. So if you're in deep sleep, it won't wake you. But if it's like, you know, if your wake time is 6 a.m. at 5.55, if it determines that you're in a, a light sleep cycle, your alarm will then buzz your wrist or go off however you have it set. And, and I've actually found that to be um, something that works for me. It, it, it could be placebo. I don't know. But I do find that when I have a smartwatch that I'm using with a smart alarm, that I'm less groggy when I wake up. So interesting. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we will all see once we get our hands on our Pixel watch to see if we are less groggy with smart alarms or not um, and see what else <laughs> it does under the hood or on our wrist. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.